I have been a Yu-Gi-Oh player since pretty much day one with the Yu-Gi and Kaiba starter decks as well as LOB. And in my time playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I've seen the game go through a ton of changes. New mechanics have gotten added, new rules have been implemented. Yu-Gi-Oh has changed a lot in the 20 or so years that it's been around. And one of the things that I've noticed, and I'm pretty sure you guys have noticed as well if you've been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for a long period of time, is that anytime a new mechanic or new rule change is announced, some of the player base is going to push back against it. But of all of the changes that have been made to Yu-Gi-Oh over the years, the one that caused the most amount of backlash, in my opinion, was Pendulum Summoning back in 2014 for the TCG. Now in the past, I made a video talking about what you should know if you quit Yu-Gi-Oh because of Pendulum Summoning because overall the mechanic did not change the game as much as a lot of people expected it to, at least not initially. But in today's video, I'm going to go over the five biggest reasons that the player base hated pendulums when they were implemented into the TCG. Also, real quick here, I wanted to apologize for not posting any videos over the last week. Last weekend, I got married, so that was really exciting, and I took the entire week off. But I am back, so make sure to subscribe to the channel for future uploads if you haven't already. The entries in today's video are in no particular order, but let's start by talking about changing the field layout. So Yu-Gi-Oh, even throughout the changes of Synchros and Xyz Summoning, did have the same field layout for the most part from the very beginning. The only real big change that players could notice was that the Fusion deck was now called the Extra deck, but that's not really that difficult to grasp. With Pendulum Summoning though, the entire field had to be changed to fit these Pendulum Scales. And and these scales were put sort of awkwardly on the game mat. It looked really weird and it meant if you had an older mat with zones, you couldn't really use those mats if you wanted to pendulum summon. Now this isn't necessarily a terrible idea. It was the first time, at least to my knowledge, that they had done that in all of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. So if people really enjoyed pendulum summoning, you know, that might have been a cool addition. But because people already were pretty unsure about pendulum summoning, this change made a lot of people angry. We have this awkward period in Yu-Gi-Oh's history where if you have mats from when Pendulum Summoning was the big new mechanic, now if you use them these days, they'll look pretty weird compared to other players' mats. Pendulums right now are great where they are. While it does mess up some Pendulum decks not having access to all five of their back row spots if they do have two Pendulum scales up, I think overall it works a lot better and I think that a lot of players were happy when they saw this change. So this only lasted for one Master Rule, Master Rule 3, but boy did it make a lot of people angry. Next up, Pendulum Summoning is a very confusing mechanic, and the cards themselves can confuse a lot of players. They're a monster card and a spell card. They have two effect text boxes, and they have these weird scales on the left and right in the middle of the card. There are so many weird weird things going on when you look at a pendulum card for the very first time, and I know it made a lot of old school players think that Yu-Gi-Oh had really gone in a completely new direction. Now to be completely honest and fair, once you sit down and read about pendulum summoning in the rulebook or watch a tutorial video on the mechanic, it's not really as confusing as it might seem at first. But for a lot of players, they didn't really get to that point, they looked at the new cards and said, that looks way too complicated, I'm going to not play Yu-Gi-Oh for a little while. While I think that the hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh players, the ones that were going to tournaments, were generally willing to adapt to this new mechanic, I think for a lot of casual players, Pendulum Summoning killed their interest in Yu-Gi-Oh. And that's not even mentioning all of the weird rulings that happen when you have a card that is a monster in some cases and a spell in others. Once again here, I think the rulebook does a pretty great job of explaining when the card is a monster card and when the card is a spell card, but for a lot of players, it was just simply too confusing. Next up, one of the other big complaints that I saw a lot of was that pendulums had too much text. And this makes sense, right? Because even nowadays, a lot of old school players look at modern cards and they say, Yu-Gi-Oh card effect.
artifacts are way too long in the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh! So obviously those types of players were not very excited to see a new mechanic, a new type of card, where now we have two effect text boxes on every single card with that mechanic. So a lot of people complained that pendulums had too much text, and even nowadays we still see that. What is the most common card that old school or ex Yu-Gi-Oh players show when they're talking about why they don't play modern Yu-Gi-Oh? For me at least, whenever I've seen those types of discussions, I've always noticed that Nirvana High Paladin is shown in some capacity. Here's the thing about Nirvana High Paladin, it pretty much embodies everything that old school or ex Yu-Gi-Oh players hate about modern Yu-Gi-Oh. It's a synchro and a spell card, it has a ton of text, it looks really complicated, it's a high leveled monster with a lot of attack points, oh man where did old school Yu-Gi-Oh go? While Nirvana High Paladin has seen some competitive play, it's not really that popular of a card and it never really has been, but if you haven't played Yu-Gi-Oh in a long time and you look up modern cards and this card comes up, you might assume that every modern card is this complicated, when in reality that's not really the case. So basically, people People were already complaining about how much text Yu-Gi-Oh cards had, and then they added a new mechanic that created a situation where the cards could have even more text than they could before. Next up, especially when Pendulum Summoning was first revealed, people were really afraid of the power level of the mechanic in terms of being generically good in a lot of decks. Now this ended up not really being the case. We did not see a lot of regular decks splashing in a bunch of Pendulum monsters but that was what people were afraid of when it was first revealed and that definitely caused a lot of people to hate the pendulum mechanic obviously pendulum summoning five monsters on turn one is a very ridiculous thing but we didn't really see that thing happen outside of dedicated pendulum decks now in hindsight this seems pretty ridiculous but back when pendulums were first revealed a lot of people thought that pretty much every single deck would play time gazer and stargazer magician alongside Adai's Pendulum Dragon. Like I said, it seems pretty crazy nowadays, but back then, it seemed pretty appealing. You would have a way in your deck to special summon all of the level 2 through 7 monsters in your hand for basically free. Now in practice, this didn't really work, and it was way too inconsistent, but you can go back to like early 2014 when Pendulum Summoning was announced, and you can find a lot of deck profiles online with this engine. It turns out though that in general, Pendulums work better when your entire deck is made up of pendulum monsters, so you didn't really have to worry about people splashing in Time Gazer and Stargazer Magician into their decks. However, people were very afraid of the power that Pendulum Summoning would bring to the average Yu-Gi-Oh deck, and that caused a lot of people to quit the game. For what it's worth though, of all of the complaints that we used to see about Pendulums, and of all the ones that we see nowadays, yeah, Pendulum Summoning 5 monsters for free every single turn is pretty broken if the deck is capable of doing it fairly consistently. So while the unrestricted version of Pendulum Summoning did become pretty broken eventually, at the start it wasn't really that popular. So far in this discussion I have primarily focused on the very beginning of Master Rule 3 and why people were angry at Pendulums during that time period. However, let's move on to the very end of Master Rule 3 and the start of Master Rule 4. Now there is a lot with Master Rule 4 that we could talk about in a video, but for this video I want to focus on the fact that a lot of people blamed Pendulum Summoning for the restrictions on Synchros, Exceeds Monsters, and Fusion Monsters, and I think I can understand where they're coming from, especially now that we have Master Rule 5 and the only monsters that are restricted by the extra monster zone and link arrows are Link Monsters and Pendulum Monsters. We now have Synchros, Fusions, and Exceeds back at full power. So I think that Konami eventually realized that while Pendulum Summoning did need to be restricted, maybe they didn't need to hit Synchros, Exceeds, and Fusion Monsters. But during Master Rule 4, a lot of people complained that Synchros, Exceeds, and Fusion Monsters wouldn't have been restricted if it wasn't for Pendulum Summoning. So that was one more thing to add on to the complaints about Pendulum Monsters. Anyway, that is all for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below.
below if your opinion about pendulum monsters has changed over the years. How did you feel when they were first introduced versus how do you feel right now about the mechanic? I'll see you later. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.